Right, just a, a quick message before we get into this next video. Um, happy Christmas to you all. It's the 28th today, so hope you've all had a good Christmas. Um, I've been working on speakers uh, quite a lot recently, and um, yeah, just getting around to a bit of editing at the moment. Um, just a quick message on this next part of this video. Um, I've been getting a lot of comments about capacitors and inductors and how they're orientated and everything. I just want to make it really clear again this is a refurbishment project, it's not an upgrade. We are not mucking around and redesigning the crossover, um, we are simply refurbishing what Celestian already did. Um, if I was building a crossover and I was using air core inductors, I would never lay them out side by side on the same plane. I think we all know that. Uh, we would have them maybe one flat, the next one upright 90 degrees, and if we had a third, um, 90 degrees to that upright, or better still, just completely separated. Um, so yes, that's that's a known. But Celestian laid them out that way. There will be cross talk between them. Um, basically you're setting up a transformer by having them side by side like that. But the cross talk will be probably 50, 60 dB down. Um, you know, nothing. Um, the other thing is the capacitors in use. Yes, polypropylene, polyester ca capacitors will be better. Um, but that's not what was used originally. We are doing a sympathetic refurbishment to maintain that sound that Celestian instilled in these speakers. Um, the values of the caps we found on the mid-range and the tweeter circuit have gone way out of tolerance. Um, so we are replacing them with sympathetic components which will marry up with the original design. This is probably the sixth or seventh pair of these I've worked on. I've done polycap upgrades and refurbishments like I'm doing here and in all honesty with these speakers, with these drivers, the original electrolytic L caps work best. Um, polycaps to me just sound a bit harsh, um, the drivers really aren't up to it. Um, so yeah, anyway, hope you enjoy it, um, catch up with you in the new year. I'm getting set up, ready to do some measurements, so we'll have the 44s in here soon. So we'll do a proper signal sweep, off-axis response, spectral decay, and um, yeah, kind of see how good these speakers really were. Um, and then obviously the most important measuring device is these, so we'll um, give them a good listen up. And um, I'm going to try and find some tracks that are royalty free, that sound good, that I can... Um, yeah, obviously demonstrate the speakers being played, not that you'll um, get to hear them through a, a video camera microphone, but um, yeah, might give you a bit of an idea anyway. So yeah, um, catch you all soon, enjoy the vid.
negative red, positive black, <coughs> negative black, positive red. Someone got that the wrong way around, didn't they? Let's take off these crappy things. So if you do replace your binding post on these, um, be a bit mindful that this is metal. Um, and whilst the hole in the metal is considerably larger than the hole in the plastic, your binding post, if you put both of them in there without any gasket or insulation, um, there's a good chance they'll short. So the original binding posts had these, uh, I think they're probably Paxlin washers to isolate the binding post from this metal, so I'm going to reuse those. Give them a bit of a, a wipe first, <clears throat> so rubbing alcohol again. Hopefully these will <coughs> go through the same holes. Mm, almost. take these off at the moment because I want to make sure that the hole for the cable if you do use cables rather than banana plugs is the right way up all right so there we go all brass lovely lovely quite small these as well so yeah pretty sympathetic to what they originally had but banana plugs cable through the hole or you can wrap it round whatever all good Right, so these are sprayed now, front and back, um, and I've sanded down the filler that I put on there. Um, we've glued the brace back in, so basically uh, next thing to do is to reassemble them. Um, and then the final thing to do will be a bit of colouring on the filler, and then um, to oil them. Um, and then obviously we'll test them as well. But um, yeah, that front baffle's turned out really nicely. Turn it round. And the back, which was looking a bit sorry for itself, has had a quick coat of satin black as well. Um, so once they're oiled up, uh, they're gonna look, yeah, pretty tidy again. So um, yeah, let's start putting these back together. Right, so the very first thing we've gotta get inside here is the crossover. Um, we need a quarter inch socket and obviously one of our lovely refurbed crossovers. Um, so it looks like I've got another pair of these coming in in the new year, um, in January. Um, and there's another guy that's contacted me about a pair of these as well. So, yeah, just 44s, 44s and 44s all the time, which is good. Um, yeah, I do enjoy working on these. I've still got my own set to do as well, but that's going to be um, very different to refurbishing these and keeping them original uh, mine are going to be quite heavily upgraded so that should be interesting I hope right. 
out, in you go. So we've got those there. Yep. Tweeter. Mid-range. Woofer. Okay, we're not going to bore you with screwing that down. Right, so that's all in there and tightened down. So now I need to solder on the input leads to the new binding posts and then get the drivers back in after we've put the foam in, obviously. Right, so they're all soldered up again. All our cables are through where they need to be. So yeah, foam back in and then we can solder up the drivers. So we have one big round piece to go in the bottom of the mid-range. Tube first. That's a reasonable volume, that mid-range. Um, it's got to be a good five litres, maybe six. Right, so that's all in there. So you've got a piece that wraps all the way around and then the big piece that goes in after. I stopped the camera and swapped them around. And then we've got another piece to go in the mid-range enclosure as well. Okay, good, good, good. Right, we can solder these drivers up now. So don't forget, <coughs> when you're soldering your um, drivers back in, to have a piece, piece of cardboard underneath the, the um, terminals. So if you do drip any solder down, it doesn't drip onto the rubber suspension or anything like that, because it will just melt straight through it. Range done. Don't forget to take that out either. <coughs> right. Pull some of this through. These are going in slightly a slightly different orientation to how they came out because just in case there's any cone sag or anything. So these drivers are still um, not grubby, aged, that's the word. The cone material is good, the rubber's good, the motor structure is good, just around the edges where they've used I think it's like a felt, um, probably to stop any, um, or to reduce any baffle gain, that sort of thing. So, tighten these down evenly. And if you can, I do like the screws facing the same direction. I know that's a bit anal, but hey, why not? Right, mid range is in there. Lovely. So we'll do the tweeter next. Hopefully I can tell which way up this was. So we'll get the clamp started. I 
I've never been a fan of these clamps. There's a version of this tweeter with three holes in it. And um, quite why Celestian did this, I don't know. It's a bit weird. Okay, now the woofer. So again, I'll put a bit of cardboard under there. So what I did do um, was to seal up the cables going into the mid-range tube. To try and keep that mid-range enclosure airtight um, and also separate from the or separated from the woofer enclosure. Because <laughs> I've come across these before where there's been a big hole to the mid-range and this woofer in and out, um, you push it and you can actually see the mid-range lift up. Um, so that ain't good. Again with these, just tighten them down gently, evenly. Probably you're going to distort um, a driver like this, a basket being solid aluminium like this. It's going to take a bit of doing. Okay. Right, so this one's back together. Tweeter, mid-range, woofer, all in there. Front baffles painted black. Um, so the next thing to do is to just oil them. Um, so I'll probably just use some good Danish oil um, on these and um, yeah, put the other one together. And then what we're gonna do with these, we're going to um, measure them properly. We'll do a full um, SPL versus frequency um, sweep and probably a spectral decay as well. Let's see how good these are. Um, so uh, yeah, that's coming up shortly and we need to do the grills. Guys, seriously windy outside. Right, I've um, started tearing down these grills. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that one's had it. It's broken there, there and there. Um, 
yeah as you can see it's just chipboard um, you can see where the foam was on there and that's all broken off um, so we'll simply remake that um, and we'll have to run the router around the edge to make this little um, slot here for the cloth to sit in um, so yeah but I was hoping this would happen um, when I took apart the other grill um, I was hoping 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 that the little mesh cover for the tweeter might have dropped through the um, uh, between the felt the cloth and the wooden um, grill and drop down and lo and behold when I tore this one down you can see all the foam all breaking down here it's pretty horrible and the this cloth is absolutely rotten Look. so yeah that's had it and thankfully dun, 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 there it is so that means I'm quite happy now to refurbish this. Um, I found uh, a couple of um, new old stock tweeters, um, but the pair of them are, you know, they're over over a hundred quid for a pair. Um, so, assuming I can get the diaphragm out okay, you can see there. Um, hopefully, through that, how probably the laminated coil has melted. So I hope it hasn't stuck itself in there. Um, so as long as I can get that out, I can replace that diaphragm. And then we have the cap, which goes that way around, that we can uh, fix back on. So I think we've um, we got a chance of re repairing this tweeter, which is great, because basically um, these are both done now. So I'm shortly going to take this into the office and measure this. Um, and this one's done, but obviously we're missing the tweeter. So that is a serious piece of good news. Cool, right, I'll take that apart and, uh, yeah, see if we can order up a, a replacement diaphragm. Right, so that came out pretty easily. That needs a damn good clean, but, yeah, all in all, minimal corrosion. Really good, and here is the old diaphragm. You can see how, how cooked a voice coil is so yeah I suspect the um, capacitors that had gone way out of tolerance on the tweeter circuit had probably allowed this to see um, a lot of low frequency um, these are always used uh, more as a super tweeter probably three to five thousand Hertz upwards so uh, I think we had a value of around 14 microfarad so this would have seen um, yeah probably six seven hundred Hertz um, at a reasonable um, volume, so I'd imagine that's probably what's cooked this. Um, but yeah, I can get a replacement. I think they're about 40 or 50 quid. Um, we obviously have this now. Great, we can rebuild build that. Cool.